and just state, I cannot afford to buy the Quran, you'll get your free copy. The tapes, the normal cassettes, will be ready early next week. The video cassettes of the series will be available in plus minus three weeks time. As you can see, it is being done by professional people. I believe they said there will be a professional trinity on the stage, so that's why they did it. The video cassettes will be 25 rand each. And you can write to the propagation center. Don't understand this business because Mr. Didat also doesn't understand it. He says you write for a tape, for a cassette, you send your 25 rands, they send the cassette to you. You keep it for a month, if you like it, keep it. You feel, well, I've seen enough and I've made 10 copies of it. Send it back, you get your 25 rands back. <laughs> we invite you, please, to come tomorrow evening to the city hall. The topic promises to be an interesting one. The crucifixion or the crucifixion. Please be early. The city hall is not that big. Ask the Malay choirs, then I'll go to the Good Hope Center. On Monday evening, at the Athlon Civic Center, the topic will be Al-Quran, a visual miracle. A brief answer was given the other evening. What, what miracles did Muhammad وسلم, perform? In the Quran, we say in the, in the Ahadith, there are tons of examples. Some may question, are the Ahadith uh, valid or are they invalid? We say, well, forget the Ahadith. The Quran is the living miracle and the visual miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I don't claim to be able to take over the topic of Brother Ahmad, but all the miracles which Jesus, peace be upon him, performed, and Abi Musa alayhi salatu wa salam performed, the only people who could testify to that were the people who saw it. Here anybody can testify, Muslim or non-Muslim, he can touch it, see it, and he will be convinced. Please come on Monday evening so that you could also learn further how you can prove that Al-Quran is the visual, living, and ever-living miracle of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On Tuesday evening in the Kensington Civic Center, which will be the farewell lecture, the question is, is Jesus God? We come now to question time. And I think I speak English to a fairly decent degree. I don't think my voice is bad. I said it is question time. Some people misunderstand it. They think it is lecture time. Some people misunderstand it. They think it's debating time. I think Brother Ahmad has shown in his life that if you challenge him to any debate on the topics in which he specializes, he's only too willing and only too welcome and only too ready to come. If you want to have a debate, please hire a hall and give him decent time in which to prepare his topic, then he will have a debate. But now the normal form of, of, uh, or the format of a lecture is I say what I like to say or what I think I would like to say. Then you put your question and I'll give you an answer. We don't fight, we then don't argue. When we come for question time, there's a microphone in front here. Please come and put your question. One question at a time. If you have more than one question and there's a queue behind you, please then go to the back of the queue for the second question. It's over now to question time. John puts his question, I can tell you that he has come to love Brother Ahmad Didat so much, he has set up and accepted a private appointment on Sunday morning because we haven't got the time to answer all his questions. He doesn't perhaps put it in a clear manner at all times, but I feel he is interested and he's here. But he is invited uh, on Sunday to come and spend 
a short time with Brother Ahmad. A question, please, John. Um, Mr. Ahmad, did that, if your wife knows you have a servant there and she is barren, she can't bear, she can't bear a child to you, and she tells you, you can take her as wife, and the God Almighty says that your bare woman that can't bear a child, she will bear a son to you. Which one will you accept? I think what uh, young John has in mind is this, that Sarah, the wife of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, she couldn't bear any children, no children. So, you know, getting old, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam is getting old, Sarah is getting old, everybody's talking about she's barren, she's barren, she's barren. It's a disgraceful thing among the Eastern people not having a child. So she says, look, go unto Hagar, Hajra, and be a child by her. Now, this is how weddings took place. You know, there were no ceremonies going to court before the magistrate, and then he reads out a formula to you, and then he gives you a certificate. No. My daughter, you see all the prophets, when they went, got the wife, he said, look, he said, oh, take her to wife. That means it's yours. And he's his wife. Only man who has a right to her is that person to whom the woman is given. Hajra was supposed to have inherited, uh, ha, Sarah is supposed to have been given this Hajra as her maid. And she says, look here, have her. And Hazrat Ibrahim a man of God, a friend of God. Would we say that he was committing adultery with her? If he was, God Almighty would have reprimanded him. No. His friend, Khalilullah, the friend of God, Everybody says, the Jew says, the father Abraham, the Christians say, father Abraham, Muslims say, father Abraham. This father of ours committing adultery? Can we ever think like that? Can we ever talk like that? Hmm? So he goes unto her and she begets a child. Now when she begets a child, for 13 years, there was no question about an offer being made. He said, look, do you want to do this one or that one? There was no question because the woman is not getting it. Sarah is not getting any children. And for 13 more years, she didn't have anything. 13 years. Hazrat Ismail salam, was the only son and seed of Abraham for 13 years. After 13 years, Allah wants to also bless Sarah. And so he, she also gets a child and his name was Ishaq. So what is the problem? If God Almighty, according to the Bible, he says, and as for Ishmael, Ishmael thy son, and as for Ishmael, thy seed. If you believe that this is the word of God, then God is saying, Ishmael, your son. If God accepts, who the hell are you? Or any monkey, you know, to take says, no, he's not his son. What right has anybody to come along and deny him that right? If I married a Bushman woman, or a Hottentot woman, and she gave birth to a child, I accept that child as my child. What right have you to say that's not my child? I ask you. Have you any right? So on the standard, the Jewish standard, he said, look, you think that Sarah is the legitimate wife and this is the illegitimate wife? I said, look, even then, your progeny in which Jesus came is a rotten, a rotten progeny than that of Ismail on the standard that you are giving. We are not creating the standards. These are not our standards. These are the standards as we are. You judge, and Jesus told you. He says, judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured unto you. He said, you hypocrite. He said, why seest thou the beam in thy brother's eye, and seest not the moat in thy own eye? He said, first remove the moat from thy own eye, before wanting to remove from your brother's eye. He said, you must heed that warning. Heed that warning, that before you point a finger, think twice. This man, the Jew, didn't think twice. So he got into a mess. We must think twice before we open our mouth. What you say, how you judge other people. Uh, just before, John, uh, would I be fair if I say that if there's nobody else with a question, we give you another question, opportunity for another question. Is that fair? Is there another person to put a question? Please come to the front. <laughs>